there is no connector that the average user is as familiar with as USB. We use it to connect flash drives, computer peripherals, phone chargers, you name it. It's everywhere. And it's only natural given that the USB acronym stands for Universal Series Bus. But as with all evolving technologies, there is a whole slew of numbers and technical terms that seem to serve no purpose other than to confuse you. Just look at the USB nomenclature. We went from USB 2.0 and USB 3.0 to USB 3.1 Gen 1 and Gen 2 and even USB 3.2. And we already know that USB 4.0 is on its way. It's only natural that users are left to wonder whether everyone in the tech industry learned to count from Microsoft, or whether there's a reason why we've had to make so many pit stops between USB 3.0 and USB 4.0. That's what we'll be focusing on in today's video. We'll pay extra attention to the distinction between USB 3.1, Gen 1, and Gen 2. But we'll go through all the iterations of this technology from its conception to its development and plans for the future. So without any further ado, let's begin. Try and imagine a world without the USB port. It's a lawless land where every manufacturer is making their own ports and connectors and the average user always has to be on the lookout for parts that don't fit and aren't compatible. This is what the world looked like before 1996. And let's not forget that this was a time when very few people had internet connections and those who did had abysmal ones. So you can't help but feel pity for the poor gamer who went to the hardware store and didn't know what connectors he needed on the ends of his cables. USB was created precisely because there was a need for a simple, universal connector that could be used with many devices. It was a result of a collaborative effort of seven big IT companies. Compaq, IBM, DEC, Intel, Nortel, NEC, and Microsoft. And it made the lives of both users and hardware manufacturers way easier. Obviously, it has evolved over time, but the differences between the original USB, USB 2.0, and USB 3.0 are about as simple as they appear on paper. The newer iterations are faster, and they are all backwards compatible. There's a bit more to it than that, of course, but that's all you as the user needed to know. Transfer speeds went from 12 megabits per second of the original USB released in 1996 to the 5 gigabits of the USB 3.0 released in 2008. And then in 2013, we got USB 3.1 in two flavors, Gen 1 and Gen 2. So let's see what this is all about, shall we? Now there's one thing we need to set clear before we get any further into this convoluted discussion. There aren't really any differences between USB 3.0 and USB 3.1 Gen 1. In fact, USB 3.1 Gen 1 is just USB 3.0, but rebranded. Technically speaking, USB 3.0 doesn't really exist anymore. As we've said, it's convoluted. This is why you'll sometimes hear people say USB 3.0 to refer to what's technically called USB 3.1 Gen 1, and then use USB 3.1 to refer specifically to USB 3.1 Gen 2. This nomenclature makes more sense to us as well, but we'll use the official terms for the purposes of this video. In any case, the biggest difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 is, once again, transfer speed. USB 3.1 Gen 2 has the Super Speed Plus Transfer Mode, which offers a transfer speed of 10 gigabits per second. That's twice the speed that USB 3.1 Gen 1 and its regular Super Speed Transfer Mode are capable of. In addition to this, Gen 2 uses a more advanced 128B, 132B encoding scheme. And those are pretty much all the relevant differences. There are also some backward compatibility issues, like for example, USB B 3.1 cables aren't compatible with USB B 2.0 ports. But going more in depth here would likely only serve to confuse you even more than you already are. Just know that starting with Gen 2, there's been a steady trend of phasing out USB B ports and a larger emphasis on USB C ports. Needless to say, USB technology isn't going anywhere anytime soon. USB 3.2 is already out. It's just that it hasn't become as prevalent as USB 3.0 yet. 
As expected, this new iteration of USB brought with it another speed boost, which is really great. But believe it or not, it also brought with it another labeling mess. And this one is possibly even messier than the last. USB 3.2 comes in four flavors, for lack of a better word. Gen 1x1, Gen 1x2, Gen 2x1, and Gen 2x2. Now, Gens 1x1 and 1x2 both use the old 8B, 10B encoding. Gen 1x1 has a 5 gigabit transfer speed, while the USB-C exclusive Gen 1x2 has a transfer speed of 10 gigabits per second. Then Gens 2x1 and 2x2 also share an encoding type this time with the new 128B, 132B. The former has a transfer speed of 10 gigabits per second, while the latter bumps this all the way up to 20 gigabits per second, at the expense of being a USB-C exclusive. Aside from the speed bump, we can see that USB 3.2 has begun phasing out USB-A connectors in favor of USB-C as the one connector to rule them all. In a way, this was inevitable. Not only is Type-C faster, but it can also be plugged in either way, which is something that everyone who has ever used a USB-A connector can appreciate. As for the future iterations of USB, we already know that it will support transfer speeds of 40 gigabits per second and only use the USB-C connector. What's more, it's going to feature Thunderbolt 3 compatibility, so Apple and Android devices will likely be able to share chargers. What a time to be alive, honestly. And that about does it for this video. To summarize, aside from some compatibility issues, the most important change between different iterations of USB connectors is the speed. It's as straightforward as that, honestly. But the nomenclature is quite nasty once we get past USB 2.0, so let's just try and clarify this one more time. There are only two types of USB connectors stuffed in between USB 2.0 and USB 3.2 but we refer to them in one of the following two ways. We can either make the distinction between USB 3.0 and USB 3.1, or we can skip USB 3.0 entirely and just have Gen 1 and Gen 2 of USB 3.1. Why it had to be like this, eh, only the USB implementers forum knows, but it's not so terrible once you manage to wrap your head around it. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. If you have, you can help us out by liking it and subscribing to our channel. And if you've got friends who could benefit from seeing this video, help them out by sharing it, either directly or on social media. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to click on a bell icon so that you'll get a notification whenever a new video gets released. We upload new videos regularly, so keep an eye out for the notification bell for the next one. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.